Welcome everybody, I'm Paolo Cassano. Uh, today is 12, eight to 23, and welcome to the MGH Brain Photobiomodulation Round. It is uh, my great pleasure to welcome uh, uh, Guillaume Blivet from uh, Regen Life, a co-founder and chief innovation officer, who is going to present on Alzheimer's and uh, uh, photobiomodulation from uh, preclinical to clinical models. Uh, Guillaume, take it away. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, uh, big thanks to you, Paolo, for uh, the organization of this virtual meeting. Um, I'm delighted to uh, present you um, this presentation from preclinical to clinical development, uh, exploring brain gut photobiomodulation therapy for Alzheimer's disease. Um, I need to share my screen first. Um, so let me check. Uh, can you see my screen? We can. Oh, okay, great. Um, to introduce myself briefly, I'm I am an entrepreneur and an innovator with uh, more than more than fifteen years of global experience in multiple areas of healthcare, especially disease management and medical technologies. And I specialized in public health, and I am also graduated with an executive MBA. And during my career, I had the opportunity to discover an innovative technology that inspired me and in which I saw prospects for application in neurology. Of course, it is uh, photobiomodulation. And that's why I'm currently uh, Chief Innovation Officer of Region Life, a uh, company I've co-founded in 2016. And so uh, with Regen Life, we develop uh, medical devices dedicated to people living with uh, neurological diseases and specifically Alzheimer's disease. Uh, this is my disclosures. Uh, first, I want to present uh, the partnerships we have um, because uh, we work uh, with several partnerships, uh, res research institutes, universities, and hospitals for preclinical development, clinical development, and uh, photonics as well. Uh, we are certified uh, ISO 13485 also. Uh, as you know, Alzheimer's disease is a, is an um, irreversible neurodegenerative disease for which new therapeutic strategies are, urgent, are urgently needed. And AD is a part of the dementia burden. Um, currently, there are 55 million people currently living with AD or other dementia, and the annual cost is so important. Uh, 1.3 trillion of dollars, according to the WHO. So it's a real burden. And despite significant progress in the field, finding therapies as, that consistently demonstrate both safety and efficacy remains a challenge. Um, in recent years, novel non-pharmacological interventions such as transcranial photobiomodulation therapy, transcranial magnetic stimulation, transcranial electromagnetic treatment, TDCS, deep brain stimulation, um, all these um, neurostimulation uh, therapies have been developed to treat neurological and psychiatric disorders. And these interventions have demonstrated potential for application in the treatment of AB. Um, in 2018, we have published our first preclinical proof of concept on Alzheimer's disease. Um, the assumption of various mechanisms in AD, such as mitochondrial dysfunction or inflammatory processes, 
supports the use of transcranial PBM therapy that has been used in various clinical trials demonstrating improvement in cognitive performance in persons with mild cognitive impairments, improvement in the quality of life and self-independence of patients with dementia. Uh, in this study, the, um, actually the device we used in our preclinical studies, um, it, it is the RGN 500 device made by Regionife. It provides uh, three photonic stimulation using light sources in the red and near infrared spectrums, including a near laser combined with a near LED and a red LED. Uh, which is surrounded by a static magnetic field. So the photonic emissions are pulsed for a 10 minute exposure at the skin surface with a total irradiance of 28 milliwatt per centimeter square and a total fluence of 8.4 joule per centimeter, per centimeter square. Considering the, the possibility of an obscopal effect from such stimulation based on developing evidence of brain gut interactions, the treatment was applied to two sites, the head and abdomen, compared also with a brain only or abdomen only application and a control group. In this preclinical study, um, the device uh, as a photobiomodulation therapy, as a brain gut photobiomodulation therapy, has shown its efficacy to fully reverse the memory deficits and the biochemical changes in an I beta 2535 injected mouse model. Um, and this mouse model mimics uh, the AD pathological features. The efficacy of uh, this brain gut PBM treatment can be compared to what has been found in the same model by daily treatments with various pharmacological substances, including donepezil, one of the rare available AD treatment. Interestingly, this neuroprotective effect has only been observed when both head and abdomen were exposed, but not head only or abdomen only, suggesting that several mechanisms are involved including direct activation of cellular chromophores, cytochrome cyoxylase at the neuronal level and indirect effects resulting from abdominal exposure. Um, daily application of uh, this brain gut photobiomodulation therapy on mice to both the head and the abdomen for 10 minutes produced a neuroprotective effects against the detrimental effects of the A-beta 2535 peptide injection, leading to normalization of all the modified behavioral and biochemical parameters. So in this slide, there are some uh, examples of um, uh, here, the way maze to evaluate short-term memory, uh, AD biomarkers, which have evaluated um, uh, amyloid and tau protein contents, and uh, GFAP regarding neuroinflammation. Indeed, we have shown that gut microbiota, this biosis in this mouse model was dramatically impacted by the device-based treatment. The frequency of some bacterial taxa seemed to be partially reversed to healthy conditions, suggesting a positive impact on the gut-brain axis. The microbiota was characterized via 16S RNA sequencing and a cognitive and biological evaluation was performed. Sickle content was sampled from mice under PBM treatment in the groups with the best performances at the moment of sacrifice. The content was submitted to metagenomic analysis. The analysis showed that the I beta 2535 peptide injection produced changes in the percentage of various phyla, namely firmicutes, bacteroidetes, tenericutes, and deferibacteres, as compared to the scrambled peptide injected animals. Daily application of PBM therapy to the head and abdomen reversed the decrease in firmicutes 
and the increase in tenericots and bacteroidetes and decrease the expression of deferibacteres in control and I beta 2535 animals. What is interesting to observe also is that regarding firmicutes and bacteroidetes, the same trends are observed with uh, Alzheimer's disease patients. So as a conclusion, um, the gut microbiota dysbiosis uh, in this mouse model is dramatically impacted by the brain-gut photobiomodulation treatment. And the frequency of some bacterial taxa seems to be partially reversed to healthy conditions, suggestive of a positive impact on the gut-brain axis. So with this dry exposition has demonstrated a striking efficacy on memory performances in this model. We also have to consider that the light diffusion into brain tissue is very different with mice compared to humans. Many studies of PBM in neuroscience on animal models show several beneficial effects, such as increased blood flow, increased synaptogenesis, increased angiogenesis, reduced neuron ex excitotoxicity, increased neurotrophins, increased neurons progenitor cells, anti-apoptosis, anti-inflammatory, increased antioxidants, and reduced gut microbiota dysbiosis. Um, of course, this is very different to expose uh, a, mass, a mouse in comparison to expose a human. Uh, because uh, the, the diffusion of photons uh, is probably really better into the brain of an animal and more complex uh, to diffuse the, the light into, uh, in, into a, a human brain. Uh, according to several studies in photobiomodulation, which have been published on post-mortem model and uh, also using the Monte Carlo technique, um, red and infrared light can penetrate up to two, three centimeters uh, into brain tissue. That means it can reach the cortex and some white matter. Um, so this is very encouraging results uh, together with the scientific state of the art on uh, transcranial photobiomodulation, uh, all the data from the literature were justifying new clinical investigations in human subjects. So we have launched a randomized, double-blind, and sham controlled trial of, an, of this brain-gut photobiomodulation therapy. And so this is the results uh, resulting from uh, this study focused on safety and patient compliance. And this study has been published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease in 2022. So to translate our preclinical development into a clinical development, we have developed and patented a modular prototype medical device for a transabdominal and transcranial application. According to professionals and patients' expectations, we have listened to this device had to be non-invasive to permit short sessions, time, outpatient care, ergonomic and compact and easy to use. This medical device, RGN 530, used for brain-gut PBM therapy, consists of a modular helmet and an abdominal belt, each of which is composed of uh, near-infrared lasers, near-infrared LEDs, red LEDs, and a static magnetic field. Um, the irradiance max is around 29 milliwatts per centimeter square, and the fluence max for 25 minute exposure is around 22 joules per centimeter square. This study was a double blind randomized monocentric sham controlled clinical trial, randomization of patients to one of the treatment groups, PBM or sham, was stratified by gender, age, and uh, minimal minimal state examination MMSE score for inclusion. Uh, the main inclusion criteria uh, was concerning patients from fifty five to eighty five years old, 
with an AD diagnosis according to McCann and an MMSC score between 16 and 26. So uh, it concerns my two moderate AD patients. Uh, it was planned to include 64 patients randomized in two groups, but uh, the study was ended prematurely due to the COVID-19 crisis and the lockdown because actually patients couldn't uh, go to the hospital during uh, the lockdown. So we had to, to stop prematurely the, the study. From August 2018 to January 2020, 60 patients were included in the UNIC study center who participated in this pilot study, and 53 patients were randomized, constituting the full analysis set. Among the seven patients not randomized, six patients did not meet the study eligibility criteria, and one patient secondary secondarily refused to participate in the study. After randomization, 27 patients were allocated to the PBM group, and 26 patients were allocated to the placebo sham group. After inclusion, patients were randomized in two treatment groups, PBM group, brain gut, PB, brain gut PBM group, and no PBM group. Um, so actually, it was a it was a sham device, uh, and actually, it was uh, globally the same, and uh, it was not possible for the patient and the caregiver to distinguish the the, the active device uh, and uh, non-active sham device. Patients of both groups had forty treatment sessions of twenty five minutes each over eight weeks, being five sessions per week. All patients were followed for a four-week period after treatment stop, being a study duration of 12 weeks. So this is the design, the study design. Uh, so yes, the study duration was 12 weeks. Each patient had 40 treatment sessions lasting 25 minutes, each over a period of eight weeks, from day one to day 60, uh, with five sessions per week and uh, were followed for a four-week period after treatment discontinuation. The patients, uh, they had five mandatory visits. Uh, first, the inclusion visit, um, visit zero. Uh, visit zero was uh, 30 to 10 days before uh, the first visit, visit one. And the treatment initiation visit, so the visit one at day zero. And then there was a follow-up uh, it was followed by a follow-up visit during the treatment, the visit two on day 30, and a follow-up visit just after the end of the treatment, so the visit three on day 60. And the last follow-up visit, 30 days after the end of the treatment, visit four on day 90. This is the compliance with this brain gut PBM treatment and compliance to treatment is presented by treatment group on the full analysis set. And as you can see, the compliance was very good. The safety assessments included the recording of all adverse events from the time of the patient signing the informed consent to the completion of the study. And it was independent of the severity of the adverse events or, or the relationship to the, to the investigational device. And uh, all events were coded with the, with the MEDRA. Adverse events were mainly mined and there was no serious adverse events reported. Only one patient reported three adverse events related to the investigational medical device. Uh, the analysis of uh, vital signs, clinical and MRI examination results, biological parameters, and psycho behavioral tests did not raise any safety concerns during the course of the study. So, Actually, yes, the and the, the most commonly reported adverse events were nasopharyngitis and postprandial hyperglass hyperglycemia and falls. Um, 
but actually there was only three adverse events possibly related to the investigational medical device. So meaning that the safety is uh, really good. Regarding the, the efficacy outcome, um, first uh, I will present uh, the, the primary endpoint uh, because it was the change in uh, the ADASCOG total score between the visit zero and visit three in my two moderate AD patients treated with the brain gut uh, PBM. Uh, the primary end, uh, the primary endpoint, uh, the ADASCOG total score increased from baseline to visit three in both treatment groups. Um, but more importantly, in patients treated with placebo sham. Although not, stat not statistically significant, this result uh, suggests a trend in favor of cognitive improvement in patients treated with PBM compared to uh, the placebo sham group. Um, the ADAS-COG total score decreased from baseline to visit four in the PBM group while it increased in the placebo group. Also, no statistically significant. This result confirms the trend observed at visit three. Um, so, so, and uh, the other thing is that uh, the Alaska uh, comprehension subscore decreased from baseline to visit three in the PBM group, while it increased in the placebo group. And the difference was uh, statistically significant as shown by the p-value. Uh, here, p-value is uh, 0 0.029. And um, exploratory analysis have shown that this difference between treatment groups was only found in patients under 75 years of age and not in older patients. Um, the trail making test uh, B, the TMTB completion time decreased at uh, visit three in the PBM group while it increased in the placebo group. This statistically significant difference suggests a positive effect of brain PBM on executive functions. Also, not statistically significant, the same trend was observed at visit four. And uh, expert Exploratory analyses have also shown that this difference between treatment group is only found in patients under 75 years of age and not in older patients. Uh, we have also uh, an improvement regarding the, the forward verbal span. Uh, um, also with an improvement and uh, a significant uh, improvement at uh, visit four in comparison to baseline. Um, in conclusion, this study has proven the tolerability and the feasibility of uh, this brain gut photobiomodulation treatment in my to moderate AD patients. Um, this study also highlighted encouraging efficacy trends despite the reduced statistical power due to the, to the premature end of the study associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. So this safe and non-invasive treatment mode really constitutes an attractive alternative approach to the traditional methods of AD patient management and could even be performed at home by the patients. So this study has also provided uh, to us precious insights for the design of the next uh, trial that uh, I will uh, talk uh, just after. And so, um, yes, this again. So to, to synthesize, uh, this pilot study has shown very good safety and demonstrated the, the feasibility of the brain gut PBM therapy in my two moderate AD patients. And, um, and uh, yes, it highlights encouraging efficacy trends despite this, uh, this loss of statistical power 
And uh, we have also to consider the short period of treatment of the patients, which was only two months, which is actually a very, sh a very short period of time in comparison to the uh, current um, uh, clinical evaluation of uh, novel therapies on, uh, on Alzheimer's disease. And uh, yeah, sure, the, the, the study has uh, provided us uh, all the, the the need for us to to design the the next stage a pivotal clinical trial, with the objective to ensure the safety and prove the uh, effectiveness of this therapy in a larger sample of uh, patients. Um, so now I will present the, the design of uh, this pivotal clinical trial, which is uh, ongoing. Um, so we want to explore uh, if this brain gut photobiomodulation have therapeutic potential in uh, Alzheimer's disease. And for that, we have designed a pivotal sham controlled randomized double blind multicenter clinical investigation. Um, because uh, our first pilot uh, study provided uh, important information for the design of this pivotal clinical trial, um, the, the main objective is to evaluate the cognitive benefits of uh, this novel improved uh, medical device because we have also improved um, the, the, the photonic technology. And so the device which is uh, evaluated in, uh, in this study is the RGN600. It's also a brain gut uh, PBM therapy. And um, so it's, it also takes the form of a modular helmet and a modular abdominal belt. And uh, each module is also, is, is also composed of uh, static magnetic field and near lasers, uh, near LEDs and red LEDs. And we use the pulsed wave mode at 10 Hertz. We have um, started uh, this multi-center clinical trial in uh, July, 2023. Um, we recruit patients from uh, 55 to 85 years old. Uh, with my to moderate non-genetic form of uh, Alzheimer's disease. And uh, so we have opened a first um, investigational center. Uh, so the study has commenced at uh, Toulouse University Hospital. And the uh, principal investigator is Dr. Julien Delrieux. And we are going to open other clinical investigational sites uh, in the next weeks and months. Um, the analysis will be performed in the following population sets. And uh, yes, it will be conducted across different sets, including the full analysis set per protocol populations and treated set. Um, uh, here are our objectives, uh, given a 26, 26 week treatment period followed by a 26 week follow-up period. Our primary objective is to evaluate patient's cognition at uh, week 26 as measured by, uh, the ADASCOG. And we have several secondary objectives, uh, patient's cognition, cognitive functions, autonomy, overall clinical response, quality of life, and several biomarkers regarding um, Alzheimer's, neuroinflammation, and uh, microbiota as well. We will also uh, evaluate uh, the safety and uh, medical economic interests. Um, yeah, of course, it's a multi-center double-blind randomized sham control stratifying on MMSC score. Uh, we have to enroll uh, 108 patients uh, 
uh, by four sites, including Toulouse University Hospital. Uh, patients uh, will have 84 therapy sessions of 20 minutes over 26 weeks, and there, is, there will be a follow-up uh, to 52 weeks. And data will be collected at baseline uh, week 8, week 26, and week 52. Um, here is the the design. Uh, yeah, maybe it will be better like this to, to understand uh, um, the period of pre-screening, baseline evaluation, and uh, yeah, during um, 26 weeks, the patients will receive uh, five treatment sessions uh, during uh, eight weeks, then three treatment sessions uh, from uh, week nine to week 16, and three treatment sessions uh, from week 17 to week uh, 26. And after the end of the treatment, the, the, there is a follow-up during 26 weeks. In conclusion, uh, this pivotal clinical trial is supposed to demonstrate that uh, this brain gut photobiomodulation therapy is a safe, well-tolerated, and effective disease-modifying treatment for my two moderate AD patients. In addition, it is expected to demonstrate both medical and economic benefits. Um, as you know, and I am convinced uh, on that, uh, photobiomodulation appears as a promising non-pharmacological therapeutic strategy for Alzheimer's disease. Um, it is able to mobilize multiple mechanisms in synergy by the association of transcranial to abdominal application uh, for an optimal optimal efficacy of treatment. And uh, due to its low cost, safety profile, and ability to be administered both at home and in hospital, photobiomodulation has the following potential to become widely accessible and integrated to the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Um, thank you. And I just uh, want to add that uh, we have also some uh, clinical development um, on uh, concussion. Actually, we are we have just completed a, a pilot clinical trial on sport-related concussion, and we have also some uh, preclinical development on multiple sclerosis and uh, depression. So, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Guillaume. I was. Uh quite a fascinating talk about uh, these uh, two modalities and the integration of the two. So I guess uh, we can open to question and discussion uh, um, if anyone wants to start. Um... I, I had a question, uh, I guess I can start. Oh, uh, Sarah, sorry, I see you were getting ready. Go ahead. Hi, Graham, it's nice to see you. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Uh, I just had a question. What is the relevance of the static magnetic field? Yeah, that's a good question <laughs> because uh, this is a part of uh, the singularity of this technology. Actually, um, yeah, th there are some, uh, there are several publications on uh, using static magnetic field uh, with a transcranial application uh, in the field of neurology. And uh, we were inspired by uh, this work and some other works using uh, light therapy combined with static magnetic field. And during our preclinical development, we have observed uh, um, some uh, results which were a little bit uh, better in comparison to uh, uh, only PBM application. So that's why we um, we have added uh, this static uh, magnetic field. Uh, but actually, this is some uh, preclinical development that we have not published yet. Actually, yeah. we, we, we have uh, we have done uh, a lot of um, preclinical development and we have only published um, a little part of uh, all this development but uh, we are planning uh, because we, we would like to share to share it to the to the scientific 
Facebook uh, community and the photobiomodulation community as well. And we plan to, to work on uh, a future article, probably next year, uh, to share uh, that kind of results, and especially regarding the, the dosimetry, because I think it's a very important uh, point to um, optimize photobiomodulation therapy, and especially for brain photobiomodulation therapy. Thank you. Yeah, that's fascinating. I just wondered, are you planning also to do a study where you look at photobiomodulation with and without that field? Yeah, the, the, the best would be to to compare uh, brain photobiomodulation yeah. <laughs> therapy, uh, magnetic, static magnetic uh, therapy, and both combined. But yeah, actually, it takes a lot of time and it costs a lot. So we, are, we also have to optimize our development. Yeah, awesome. uh, it's easier to do it on uh, animal models, sure. <laughs> Barney, are you muted? I have a question. I want, and thank you for a lovely talk, and I'm really excited about your trial. I wanted to know you. how you chose um, 10 hertz uh, pulse rate instead of 40 hertz pulse rate, because 40 hertz is what the Iacarino study had shown that they had 60% um, reduction in beta amyloid um, following the post um their their study but and and it was um they didn't they use continuous wave but um they only got i think 10 percent reduction in tau so i was wondering um well, how you chose the 40 hertz versus the 10 yeah thank, thank you to ask this question um uh, during our preclinical development, uh, we have uh, first evaluated several parameters, and uh, we have also evaluated um, a continuous wave emission in comparison to uh, several uh, pulsed wave emissions like 10 hertz or 40 hertz and uh, 1,000 hertz and even 5 hertz. Oh, my. And Actually, uh, from 5 hertz to 40 hertz, uh, we have not observed any differences uh, on uh, the animal, uh, the AD animal model we, we have uh, explored. Um, and uh, when we have started our development, there was not so much uh, articles and publications on, um, on the pulsed wave mode, I mean, regarding 10 hertz and 40 hertz. And, uh, and currently, I, I am not sure that we can really prove um, such difference. And uh, the other thing is that there was a lot of uh, articles and publications using um, a visual stimulation at 40 hertz. And actually, there are some uh, clinical developments uh, to evaluate uh, visual and sound stimulation at 40 hertz. And, and uh, and this is important to consider because uh, visual stimulation seems also to have a positive effect on uh, Alzheimer's disease. And it is also possible that um, when the photobiomodulation therapy, when uh, it is visible to the eyes of the patient, I mean, using uh, visible wavelengths, uh, it can also have uh, another kind of effects it's like a combination of uh, photobiomediation and uh, visual stimulation. Okay, I, I understand that. Can you tell us a little bit more about exactly where on the head you have your LED clusters? Or I wasn't quite clear. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, actually, this is a modular helmet. And uh, this modular helmet permits to guarantee a maximum of proximity. Uh, between the, the photonic emissions and, uh, and the scalp. And, um, and uh, we use uh, several modules to cover the, the whole head. Uh, so we target uh, prefrontal and the whole head. Actually, it covers the whole head. So it goes down the middle as well as both sides? Okay, yeah. I think that's always important. Yeah, 40 hertz is just what the Iacarino study suggested, and that was through the eyes only, and it was just room light, and it was only in the occipital cortex that they saw the reduction. Um, so uh, I'm 
glad that you're doing more experiments with that. I think it's great. Thank yes, you. yes. And uh, regarding this uh, preclinical development, I, I was uh, explaining this is also some uh, some yeah uh, some parameters uh, we would like to to publish soon. Oh, good. Everybody will appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the the site or the light. So it seems like from your preliminary data, at least the ones you showed today, uh, in terms of uh, peripheral somatic uh, site of treatment, you only tried the abdomen. Um, so there's really no comparison to tell us that uh, that is the region as opposed to arms, legs, back, um, other regions. So, so I don't know if you want to comment on that. Yeah, of course, uh, there is a, an abscopal effect, which is known in photobiomodulation. And when you apply uh, photobiomodulation uh, therapy on a part of the body, it can have, it can have a positive effect. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> On, on, on another side and uh, it can be surprising um, but um, so yes uh, the abdominal target uh, can be considered as a, an abscopal an abscopal effect or a systemic effect uh, but what we have observed on uh, on our uh, mouse model is that by targeting uh, the gut the abdomen, uh, we can observe a change uh, in the microbiota. So, and because of the involvement of the brain gut axis, because of all the interconnections between the brain and the gut, uh, nerves, uh, cytokines, uh, yeah, we, we, we make the hypothesis that uh, uh, the therapy um, should uh, reduce the neuroinflammation into the brain and reduce the gut microbiota dysbiosis. And uh, even if there is an abscopal effect or a systemic effect, uh, we believe that uh, this is a uh, very interesting targets. But of course, the uh, at the clinical level, the best option would be to study uh, this kind of application of PBM application on head only and abdomen only and all the sites uh, that, yeah. I know, of course, it's <laughs> yeah, limited. There are, there are, yeah, there are several uh, possibilities to study photobiomodulation. Yeah, I see there are other uh, questions, but uh, just a quick comment. Uh, you know, I get, I'm, I'm not an expert on animal models at all. Um, However, I wonder in the in the animal model, like the mouse model, probably you're going to be easily targeting the gut. Uh, in the oh. human, with all the muscle layers uh, and the thickness of those layers, uh, um, and the type of uh, fluence and irradiance of your device, uh, um, it's it seems uh, less probable that you would have an actual uh, sufficient deposition at the level of the gut. Uh, um, so that kind of uh, brings the question of, of whether that's a purely a systemic effect and uh, and if so, whether the region is, is so critical. Uh, at the end of the day, if the region is not critical and you just need a systemic effect, then probably one, uh, um, one area is good as any other and, and the abdomen is probably a convenient uh, place to, to stimulate. Um, yeah, um, I have several observations about this. Um, so uh, we we are uh, um, working on several uh, Monte Carlo simulations, and uh, of course our goal is to uh, define and uh, explore the the diffusion of photons regarding our technology uh, into the brain and uh, into the gut. And um, from uh, the, the device we have used in this first pilot clinical trial 
is not totally the same uh, in the in the pivotal clinical trial we have launched and uh, so but and we are continuously working uh, our internal r and d and uh, the the exploration of the the diffusion and using the monte carlo simulation uh, will provide us uh, more um, data to to um, optimize the the treatment and uh, the other advantage we have with uh, alzheimer's disease patients is that uh, the the loss weight and uh, so they they mostly don't have um, uh, a lot of fat so it's probably uh, easier to target the gut uh, on alzheimer's disease patients in comparison to uh, other pathologies thank you guillaume i see maria has her hand uh... Um, yes. Hi. Um, yeah, uh, we met uh, briefly a few months ago in the clinician rounds. Um, I, I work at Neuronic as research coordinator and um, just want to say very good presentation. I just have um, uh, one question regarding the ADIS COG um, on the pilot study that you conducted. Um, what was the a point change? Uh, in the group, in the active group, that was um, evidenced uh, with the ADIS COP. What was the improvement seen in terms of points? I, I saw you. You showed a a graph, and I from the graph I could see it, it was around two to three points. But I'm very interested in seeing. Yeah, on the on the ADIS COG total score uh, at. Um... At the the visit four, it was around uh, a little bit less than uh, two points. And uh, regarding the the Adascog comprehension subscore, uh, it was uh, less than one point. Uh, uh, yes, it was around one point, uh, and it was significant. And uh, regarding the Adascog total score it was uh, not enough significant. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have to, to consider that uh, the, 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 the treatment uh, period is very short because actually it's only two months in this study. And we have also to consider as well the, the statistical power uh, reduced in this study. Yes, of course. And for, for this new trial um, in the study design, you're planning to do on 26 weeks? Or for yes. how many weeks? Yes, you... patients uh, will be treated during 26 weeks, six months, yes. Okay. So three times more. All right, and Neda? Yeah, um, thank you. It was a great presentation and uh, interesting findings. Uh, my question is about biomarkers. Have you collected data like imaging or blood tests? And if so, are the results available? Um, so in the in the pivotal clinical trial, uh, yes, we want to we wanted to investigate uh, biomarkers, and uh, yes, I. I I, I say just a little bit. Uh, I, actually, I, I have presented uh, briefly the objectives of our pivotal clinical trial. But yes, we will investigate uh, biomarkers. Um, so we will analyze blood biomarkers as a I beta 42 ratio, I beta 40, uh, JFAP, um, PITO. Uh, 217 and um, NFN neurofilament, um, inflammatory markers, and fecal microbiota and metabolome. Oh, that's so, great. Um, so but like yes. just to yes, be clear, the, like you, yeah, the, the mechanism of action we want to explore is the mostly based on uh, neuroinflammation. Right. Um, so I just wanted like to be clear that the results that you presented today 
there's is there any biomarker related to that or like you're uh, aiming no, to in, collect in, in the results project? i've presented uh, regarding this pilot clinical trial uh, so I, I i i didn't present it, uh, any biomarkers okay thanks that biomarkers would be investigated in our current uh, pilot clinical trial Okay, we have a few more minutes uh, uh, for any other questions. Uh, um, so I see a question uh, in the chat as well, and a question from Joe. Uh, I guess quickly from the chat, Joe. Um, so how was the power output of the light on the helmet? Uh, um, yeah, I think you, you mentioned some of that. I don't know if you want to comment uh, on the, the power output uh, on the helmet and on the device of the gut uh yes yes the 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 irradiance uh, max is around 29 uh, milliwatt per centimeter square so during this pilot clinical trial the the fluence max for uh, 25 minute exposure uh, is around uh, 22 joules per centimeter square uh regarding this choice um so first we, we have started uh, this pilot clinical trial in uh, uh in 2020 and uh, so we wanted to do the the translation from our preclinical development uh, to this first uh first in main trial and uh, so we had, uh, yeah, we had several uh, reflections regarding to this preclinical development and uh, the clinical uh, publications to define um, a safe dose because we we wanted to yeah to use a dose uh, with a strong safety. Uh, so yeah, we decided to to use this dose. <laughs> Joe. Uh, just have three minutes. Thank you for that uh, elegant presentation and the work that you're doing. Can you speak uh, as to the, you know, your hypothesis as to why doing the care less on subsequent visits is going to be different than not doing it, is it in a sense? And also, are you going to have the actually got biomarkers in this in that other study and three if it's so well used by patients and clinicians why do they have to come into the office to do it why can't you give this to them at home so they can do it more not less just so, three questions uh so um Re regarding uh, the gut application, the brain gut, this brain gut uh, PBM application. Uh, so yes, we will uh, in the pivotal clinical trial we will investigate uh, the uh, the gut microbiota by uh, collecting uh, faces from patients, and uh, so we will we will uh, it will be the opportunity to um, to observe what we will uh, observe. And um, so, yeah, it will bring uh, very interesting data actually um, on microbiota uh, for Alzheimer's disease patients and, uh, and uh, maybe on the potential impact of uh, this brain gut uh, PBM therapy uh, on AD patients. And uh, yes, during this pivotal clinical trial, uh, patients received the treatment uh, at the hospital. But uh, the device uh, we develop is made to be used uh, both at the hospital and at home. Uh, we have just oh John. and the la and why you why the hypothesis of using it five times, three times, two times is going to be efficacious versus doing it five and five and five. Uh, yes, because uh, we we have uh, keep the the same design uh, regarding the number of sessions per week during two months. Uh, this is the same design uh, uh, in comparison to the the first pilot clinical trial. So we wanted to keep the the same design uh, for the first two months, and uh, and then to reduce the the PBM sessions. Thank you. We have one minute for a quick question from Anita and a quick answer. Uh, 
Well, I guess there's no more. Oh, yeah. yeah sorry. Sorry about that. Um, uh, just a quick comment, and I guess, you know, the numbers are very important. I understand that in wanting a larger trial, but when we did our pilot, we used 810, and it was 10 hertz. There were only five patients, but what we were able to demonstrate is that an improvement of 2.5 points in a mini mental state exam and up to 7.5 points in the ADSED COGS. So, um, in that population. I mean, I think the gut plays a very important role. We didn't do that at the time. This was a while ago. Um, but I think it's interesting. And that was treatment over 12 weeks, three times a week. So, um, I mean, it'll be interesting to see over 26 weeks in it. You know, it would have been great had we been able to treat longer than that. But um, I think it also speaks to the focused treatment on the default mode network is playing a role. Mm -hmm. Not that other areas shouldn't be treated, but ensuring that those areas in particular are treated, I believe, uh, is probably important. Yeah, I also agree regarding the the default mode network, and uh, we we target this area. Uh, okay, but great. But of, but of course, uh, regarding the um, the design of the helmet and uh, the the inter individual differences between patients because of the head size, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the the targets uh, on the head can be a little bit different. Different, to yes. Them, but globally, we uh, irradiate uh, the wool head with photobiomodulation. So, okay. Great. Thank Look forward you. to those results. Sure. Thank you, Guillaume, and thank you all. Uh, and uh, to be continued, thank you for being here today. Thank you a lot. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you, everyone.